Hey guys and welcome back to Horsepower Cartel. We are in a brand new 2020 Mahindra Tar. A lot of you guys know I booked one. I didn't get my model in the allocations that were available. And also I want a 2021 manufacturer. So I am waiting for mine. I'm hoping to get a convertible diesel. I really don't care what color at this point. I just want my car. So today we have the base model. The, I guess the LX, I don't, I'm not sure. Base model diesel, five speed, or sorry, six speed manual. Six speed manual, wow. Six speed manual. So far we did our Sunday drive, which you probably already saw. Pretty fun time driving this car. Right now, we, we got done our Sunday drive and we're gonna, you know, talk about the tar. So right off the bat, I wanna talk about the infotainment system. Real easy to use, real basic, but then nothing over the top. You know, you got your adventure statistics over here. It gives you your power. See, it has an on-road option and an off-road option. A custom option as well. Off-road option has the whole, you know, angle and then your temperature. It tells you what gear you're in as well. Pretty good. And you got your on-road option. It tells you your power, torque, a G-meter, and of course your compass, just in case you get lost yeah it's really easy to use it has an apple carplay if you connect in via two usbs over here also has an aux jack over here with a 12 volt charger on the side so you can charge your phone through that as well or whatever you want to do as you can see it's got some car fake carbon fiber wrap or i don't know what that is but it's only in this part of the car i don't see it anywhere else sound system wise it's pretty good i think it has like four speakers with like two tweeters so it's placed up in the roof which is a pretty good location because i guess if you take the tops off on the convertible one you you obviously can't have sounds on the bottom because you can't won't be able to hear anything yeah we are in the hard top there's a lot of wind noise i must say when you're on mexico bridge but then again you know this car is not the most aerodynamic car out there uh there's a lot of like easter eggs man that are put in this car like for example on the side of the window you can see there's like a picture of a cow two camels a guy and then the mandra tar i guess in front of it also there's a cool badge over there that says mandra mandra limited model tar made in india with pride pretty cool and also gives your serial number this one is 5000 something i can't even see from here and it's funny i must point out that if you look in the passenger side door it has an indent for the mirror controls just like how it is on the driver's side so i'm guessing that this car will be made in a left-hand drive and sold abroad as well so that's something to look forward to in foreign countries you know man that does export a lot of cars from india including the bolero pickup and stuff so i wouldn't be surprised if the tar makes it to uh, some other countries ac controls real easy simple nothing crazy air vents there's four I don't think there's any in the back. I don't think it's needed because it's a pretty tight cabin. Legroom's not that bad. We're gonna put Royal in the back there in a bit. I know Royal's not gonna be a fan of it, but that's his job here at Horsepower Cartel, the resident legroom tester. <laughs> <laughs> Steering feedback, really good, easy to drive, really. So, so basically, I know a lot of people, everyone, all these videos, they took this car off-roading and they want to show you the off-roading capabilities. But honestly, 60 to 70% of the buyers are not gonna take it off-roading. It's all, all gonna be city use. And so far, so good, man. It's really fuel efficient as well it's got that m hawk engine from mandra the diesel one has 130 horsepower and 300 nm of torque in the manual gearbox if you get the automatic 320 nm of torque i don't know why they did that if anything the manual should have more because you know but maybe they have a better automatic transmission than the manual one could pull more power uh, the petrol engine is about 150 horsepower and also has 300 nm of torque but this is the diesel it has that diesel grunt that rumble you want to say sounds like any typical diesel car would nothing crazy but honestly it's pretty refined i'm really surprised the way this car picks up we had some triple digit speeds pretty quickly from what i thought i mean surprised me for the timing it took yeah, you know and i didn't even realize yeah like, royal didn't even know i mean we looked down we're doing like probably double the speed limit it was, it was surprising car was stable and it was pretty good you know like no complaints there so yeah let's talk about the outside now one thing i gotta show you though when you start it up this is cool well, the needle sweep but look at that it's like a cool little graphic display saying tar and a nice background so yeah i mean they got little easter eggs here and there 
in this car. As you can see, the window switches are over here. Also got nice coin holder. Little small cup holders. I don't think so. Yeah, maybe like a 500. Cafe won't fit over. I mean, Tarners don't <laughs> drink Starbucks. <laughs> you don't drink coffee at all. So yeah, you got your infotainment display here. Not infotainment, but you got your info center here, I guess you can say. You can scroll through it. You got your digital dash. You got your uh, whatever that is. <laughs> warning history. Whoa, let's check that out. Oh, seatbelt, never mind. That's a warning. You got your settings, obviously. Trip, average, and your digital dash again. And over here, as you can see, here's the buttons for adjusting all that. Also, there is traction control, so you could turn it off. I did not know about that. I'm gonna definitely do that on the way back home. Over here, you could, you know, use the arrows to scroll through. This also has a hill descent mode, as you can see. So it has your adjustable headlights over here. So you can adjust the beam. But pretty good car. Build quality, not that bad. Can't complain for an Indian car that's under 20 lakhs. Now this car comes standard with 18 inch wheels, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool design. Fills off the wheel gap really well. As you can see, it's got some 255, 65 18s, all terrain tires, MRF, Wanderers, which is pretty good. You know, obviously it being an Indian car, it's gonna have Indian tires. So as you can see on the side over here, the M Hawk 130 logo, I guess that's the engine and that's how much horsepower it makes. So it only makes sense if it says what engine it is and how much power it makes. I swear throughout this car, you can see they've marketed in such a way and designed it in such a way where it says tar, I swear, how many times? Let's see, one, we got one in the side mirror. Obviously in the back, it's got the taillights, it says tar on both the taillights, tar on all the wheels. Of course on the other side, it says tar as well on the fender. When you open the door up, doors say tar, both sides. Just in case you didn't know what car it was, guys, it reminds you. Got this big 4x4 badge on the driver's side. And it's only on the driver's side, it's not on the passenger side. I don't know why they did that. One thing I am disappointed is with the boot space, it's not much at all. For a car this big. The boots should be a little bigger, but I guess you could put the rear seats down and then it would just be a two-seater, but boot space sucks on this. So the boots are two-piece boot, as you can see. It's got this little pretty heavy and it stays. That's pretty cool. And then this opens, obviously. And look at this. Roel got his helmet here. There's <laughs> barely any space That's left. Right. Could barely put a helmet. And Roel's got a big head, so it's a big helmet. Regular person helmet could fit in there. Probably two helmets. Like one big backpack. One big backpack. So basically two people. That's it. Two people's luggage. Maximum. Maximum. If you're traveling with the, your girlfriend, too bad. Don't buy a tar. Also, if you stop to fill up fuel, you have to give the attendant the key so he can unlock the fuel cap with the car key. I guess that's so obviously people can't steal your fuel. And on top of that, they want to make sure your car is turned off while you're fueling up. So yeah, safety feature. Time, because it's Corona, you have to give your key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially a time like this, you just have to remove your key and give it to the other person and then sanitize it and get it back. It's so weird. It's like a newer car, right? 2020 or 2021. And they still got this antenna. When was the last time you saw an antenna? on like a newer car. I haven't seen one in a while. It's crazy they put this here, but all part of the design. Gives it that rugged look too. All right, so here's the Ruel legroom test. Where are you going, boy? You gotta get him back. So first time on Horsepower Cartel, the cops came by and they were so happy to see this car. They, 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 they didn't give us a hard time at all. They were just talking about the car. Right now we're gonna see Ruel sit in the back. We figured out how to move the seat ahead. So Ruel, can you please do the honors? Wow, that was pretty easy to get in, right? Yeah, not bad. How's the my head, but that's not. How's the leg room back there, boy? Mm. Could be better. Slightly cramped because there's this thing over here. The the arch, the wheel arch. Yeah. So there's this plastic bit of, I think it's plastic. Yeah, so this thing is here, so a very limited leg space is like just this much. Yeah. Or I'll have to like... <laughs> Yeah, but then someone else can. Yeah, so I'd say leg space is quite limited because you, there's this thing here. That's for the drive shaft. The wheel out is here. And. But the seat. I mean, this seat's all the way back almost. Like, How's that? It's still a little cramped. Like, both my legs don't fit together. Okay, but the leg room's fine. Is this the leg the room's leg, fine, yeah. But the leg overall leg space isn't good. Yeah. And I have good headroom as well. I can show it to them. Yeah, the headroom's actually really good. I'm surprised. Yeah, it's a, Ruel's like 6'5". <laughs> yeah, right. On Sundays. 5'11". <laughs> 5'11". In China. Not bad. And here are the speakers I was talking about. You know, you got the tweeters over there in the middle and the small speakers and tweeters and the one more over there. And then you got some on... The one good thing is like... Side over here. Yeah, what are you saying? I, I don't feel claustrophobic because it's all The big so windows, bright. right? Yeah, yeah. So Because the old tar, you feel like... You feel kind of yeah, claustrophobic. Yeah, the old tar is definitely claustrophobic. This is bigger, uh -huh. wider. 
and uh, definitely much better. Yeah, they did a good job. Build quality wise, pretty good. But well, I want you to show them back there. You see where brake light is? Look at that. They just like left it open here. Show it, show it to them. They even got these handlebars on top so you can hold on. Pretty to Pretty good. Them. Pretty sturdy. Yeah. There's an actual roll cage. I don't know if you guys can see. There's an actual roll cage as you can see, and seat belts attached to it. So. Mm. We all love the seat belts, and so do we. At oh, okay. Okay. But uh, yeah, pretty decent legroom. One thing I wish for it if it armrest. had armrest. Yeah. Oh, come on, well, this ain't no LX 470 <laughs> dog. Okay, you know what? The problem is I've been spoiling Ruel a lot. <laughs> you know, putting him in these fancy cars. So you gotta, we gotta learn yeah, how to, you know, talk about these budget-friendly cars too. <laughs> How was it? How was your trip to the back of the pond? Pretty good. I probably wouldn't want to sit for too long. No trip to Goa back there? Uh, no, I know you're down no. to go anywhere actually. You no, rode but like, but like, not at the back. This guy rode a Honda Navi all the way from Dicer. For you, for you, sh shut the hell up. For you people who know where Dicer is, it's really far in Mumbai. He rode it from Dicer all the way to Goa and back to Mumbai on a Honda Navi, which is basically active with a bike. body shell of a bike, kind of. This guy is crazy. So Ruel just found one more Easter egg. On the speakers below over here, actually a picture of an actual tar. It's pretty cool. I love it how they place this all over the car. Obviously, that the word tar is all over the car so many times. Uh, yeah, they, they put these little Easter eggs all over the place. So you can see in the engine bay, pretty decent sized turbo. It is a VGT. Pretty sure. Uh, so you get that pretty good low end torque. And uh, yeah, the engine bay isn't cramped. A lot of space. Eventually, you know, later on, I wouldn't be surprised if you can, if you see people doing swaps in this, I wouldn't mind the LS1 or something, or maybe even a 2JZ, who knows? But uh, yeah, there there is a room for it. So yeah. Here's another thing I, I really like about this car. They actually went ahead and mentioned the air conditioning system. They give you the quantity of, I guess, gas to put into the ac and also gives you a compressor oil what kind of viscosity or what kind of oil you need also it got the recommended fluid you know for your engine obviously maximal ultra i guess it's, these are all indian brands you know maximal synthetic f2 for the manual transmission it even mentions the automatic transmission the axle fluid uh, cooling system brake and clutch power steering and diesel exhaust fluid all maxi mile and maxi clean i guess these are all indian brands but it's great that they mention it you know just in case you're stranded somewhere and you're not nearby to any Mahindra dealership service station. It's so funny that they have to mention that do not wash engine compartment with high pressure water jet. It has a picture of a guy shooting a, a water jet at the engine bay, but it's an XUV 500 in the picture, not a tar. I'm surprised. I guess he ran out of tars to put because he put it all over the car. <laughs> but yeah, the one place they should have put it, it's not there. Now, opening the trunk, you have a latch in, inside the car, like a traditional latch. You open it up and then you gotta open this up and then I'll just put these back. Now to close them, you just shut it, put this on top, make sure it's secure. Put it on this side. It only has it on two sides. All right guys, let me know what you guys thought about the, the little tar review. We didn't get that much time with it. We got the basic model, which is pretty good enough. I, I actually, my buddy Pursues pulled up an automatic petrol variant, which is, I think, the top model. Surprisingly, it doesn't have a rear view camera. It only has rear parking sensors um, in both models. It doesn't matter whether you get the high model or the lower model. But yeah, what do, let me know what you guys think, what color I should get, and what variant you think I should get. I'm leaning towards a black automatic convertible. I'm definitely going to get the convertible because if I got to deal with the wind noise, might as well, you know, go with the convertible. But it's surprisingly, I heard the convertible one has less wind noise than the hardtop. Anyways, comment below what you guys think. I don't know what this color is called, but it's pretty cool. I haven't seen it before. Ruel was telling me about orange. I don't know. Comment below what you guys think. And let me know if I should get a tar because I'm in between getting one and not getting one. Do I need another car? See you guys in another episode of Horsepower Cartel. Stay tuned.